What's happening, members of League Zero? Welcome to the Week 9 edition of the Novice Countdown. I'm here with a few of my guests. Say your name. Uh, hello, yes. I am Florida. I am the off-tank for Wisdom Academy. I'm Maverick, manager for Plot Chat. Hello, my name is Urban here, or aka Urban. Main tank for OTW. Yeah, guys, we have some new guests. We actually have a returning guest in Maverick, which is pretty cool. And yeah, we're just going to go straight hey. into it. So the, uh, for the, so in terms of the weekly recap, our first game last week was actually Wisdom Academy versus Rear Redemption. And this game, it looked like Wisdom had it when they were up 2-0. And then they decided to swap in uh, Red Knight. And usually they swap in Red Knight when they're down 0-2. So this was kind of weird. And something went wrong. In, I don't know if it was communication or just uh, Wisdom Academy not playing Synergize enough. But they ended up, they ended up tying the series 2-2 until... Raiga had to come back in for the fifth map and just finish the series out 3 2. So, I want to ask you, Florida, because you're in this game. Do you think the substitution with Red Knight kind of broke up the flow with Wisdom Academy, or was, were there more problems uh, behind that? So, in general, uh, you'll notice everyone's uh, most of the time, uh, Wisdom will swap me and Red Knight in uh, as the backup chain line, and that's just because uh, we've been practicing, we practice all the hybrids together. Uh, and that's just that's a set strategy that we have. Uh, the problem that we had was first uh, first off we had not practiced against uh, spam comps, uh, and I believe Rio was running a Junkrat Hanzo, uh, and we were not prepared uh, for that combination, and we just did not know how to play against it. Also, our managers uh, made a mistake of starting to call out some let's just say questionable compositions uh, and. They, I don't know, it, we decided to experiment when we probably shouldn't have been, but in all honesty, I believe that what really happened was uh, the throw for Rio meme got into our heads a little bit. Uh, but overall, uh, I don't, I f just feel like uh, it was just a little bit of a, just a little mistake all around on everyone, but I feel like uh, we, there's no uh, shame in us giving up two maps to Rio. Because it now shows uh, when we should put in Red Knight, uh, when we should make those substitutions. Uh, and I feel that... Oh, but we did, we were able to bring it back once Ragai came back in as well, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, so Maverick and Urban, what was your guys' opinion on this game from a spectator's perspective? Well, we... at least... <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Go on. Go on, you managers. Oh. managers. <laughs> Alright. So, I went back and watched this VOD because it was a very close game. Uh, in entirety. The first two maps were very dominant for Wisdom, but then um, I feel like Rio started to pick up steam uh, in addition to the changes that were made on Wisdom side. So it kind of made for a not lopsided match, but a it was very back and forth, almost a tug of war. And the final map, uh, Rai Guy did come in again, and he did help stabilize Wisdom and help them clutch out the win, which is why he's player of the match, but I just feel like it, this kind of okay. I'm not gonna say Rio's like top of the team, like the leaderboard now, but they definitely have potential, especially since we're now in a 16 playoff format. Mm -hmm. I think I have to add on with Maverick. I mean, it really was like I think I was not playing in the game, but I just I just heard that the, the score was that. I was extremely in shock. I was like, what? And I mean, overall though, I did, well, like I said, watch back and it was, it was an amazing game. It's just that, you know, Wisdom just had that kick at the end and they got the dub and that's really good. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, so like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a mental health coach for Wisdom, you know, I rep the boys all the time and stuff. But <laughs> these last few games, I think, I think the last four have gone to map five for Wisdom. Last three have gone to uh, map five. It's been we went map five against Rio, Flat Chat, and OTW. And also, wait, there was one. Bo yeah, OTW. I, yeah. We didn't before that. We had not gone to map five besides the first time we faced OTW, which was week one. Uh, and then, so yeah, I remember before the halftime, the halfway season point. I said Wisdom Academy was unstoppable. You guys can quote me on that. But then, as these <laughs> next few games actually come, right, you see, like, Wisdom becoming more and more mo mortal. See, I, I don't want to say this in front of you, Florida, because you are on Wisdom Academy, but I feel like, I... as the playoffs come, I feel like Wisdom, like, Wisdom Academy has to get their stuff together. Because Maybe, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I feel that uh, Wisdom right now, 
the reason we keep giving it closer is because we are tr we experiment too much in the matches, uh, and instead of using scream time to experiment with interesting comps, uh, and also our rotations are a little bit off. Uh, in all honesty, but I feel still that as long as we keep on winning, I don't think we're going to be in a bad spot. It just, we like the stress. This fact is that we have strength in numbers, but I feel that sometimes we put too much emphasis on that. Uh, and I do feel that sometimes we do need to focus a little bit more on uh, synergy. And I feel if we do that, we'll continue to remain in strong form uh, going into playoffs. Okay, fair point, fair point. I hope you guys can do that. But uh, going on, uh, the player of the match was Ragai, who played absolutely insane. Shout out to him on the main tank. And all the match was Tuesday. Uh, yeah, he popped off as well. And, and do you guys have anything to add on about those players? I mean, I I play with Rai outside of the league, and I just gotta say he he's a very clutch player. I feel when he when he's feeling good, he can really dominate a game. And I don't really know Tuzi that well. Suwi, however you say his name, I'm sorry. Uh... Yeah, because I say Swoozy, but I believe that is actually incorrect. Uh, we're, and they uh, and I always get corrected by my teammates how to pronounce it, and I always pronounce it wrong. So I'm forgetting <laughs> how to say it right now. Yeah, just from what I've seen from him, he is very similar to that. He has a very high potential when it comes to his in-game performance. I'm not sure what it's like in the team environment, but both these players have a very high capability. I think I'm the same way here. I mean, Tuesday, don't know, but it's very good to see someone that is kind of a hidden player right now really show off and show that, hey, I'm here and I can pop off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair, fair. Both those players did play really well, so yeah. Uh, but going on to the next game of the week, we had Geo versus Hyperflex, and Geo actually ended up winning this game 3-1. I mean, Geo does play really good overall. I feel like they were able to bounce back hard from their previous weeks. They, uh, the thing I like about Geo right now is they kind of had a rough ending in the uh, in the mid-season break, but they kind of got their stride together in a sense, and they've been performing really well. But uh, uh, we actually do we have any? We don't actually have anyone from Geo here. But what, what were you? What was your guys' opinion on this game from a spectator's perspective? Uh, well, I mean, looking back, looking at the game, I mean. I was looking at both ends, Hyper and Geos, and just seeing like Sword of Street and hearing that they're having light turmoil, but I heard that they ironed it out on both in both their teams. It was just the main thing was which team is going to get the win at the end of the day. That was my thing. It was like that. That was a more of the question mark game for me personally. Uh, for me, looking onto this, a problem that I've always seen uh, with High Reflex, and this is just a personal opinion, uh, is they have a tendency to rely on really specific comps or, or really spe or specific heroes. Um, not the name names, Cough, Alucard, Cough. Yeah, um, he, but I, I did see in this match he did start experimenting a lot. He didn't always play the what he's been known for, which is that Genji, uh, and. The thing is, he didn't look the best on it, however, he didn't look horrible uh, when he was not playing uh, his signature hero. But I feel like Hyperflex uh, has to start learning how to play with Alucard on different heroes, and maybe try to work around that in order for them to improve. Uh, Geo, uh, I will say they did look, start to look a little bit on a downward slide uh, at the half, but now I think they've started to pick it back up. Uh, especially with them um, ironing out those issues, uh, which I believe is with Corbs uh, and a couple of other people. Uh, but you know, overall, I feel that Geo might be starting to come up, start to rise back up, and try to join back up with the Titans at the top uh, yeah. of the table. Uh, so well, do you, oh, do you want to ask something, Maverick? I was just going to say, like, um, I didn't get a chance to really watch too much of this game, but with both these teams, I feel like. Just in general, in novice, the, the skill gap between all the teams is getting smaller and smaller. Um, like at the beginning of the season, it was very clear that Geo and Wisdom were leaps and bounds ahead of. Everyone. But I feel like at this point, it's getting closer and closer every time that we play against each other. And with Geo and Hyperflex, that's the only match last week that didn't go to map five. It does give me some worries about Hyperflex, but I have a lot of faith in their players and their management. I think they'll bounce back next week. 
Yeah, definitely. Something I do want to add about Geometric, though, is this is kind of a leak, but this video is going to be coming out on Friday, so not much. Uh, Stormy will not be on the team on Geometric. So, I don't know if this is going to affect uh, Geometric in a positive or negative way, but losing Storm, Stormy will definitely be a strong hit to them, for sure. Yeah, I, I can see, you know, losing a, a, that's a key piece of their a puzzle they have, it's gone, I mean, there is light concern, but I hope the best from them, and they solve everything out. Yeah. But, uh, going on though, the player of the match was, uh, C, I don't know, okay, SD Azome, uh, and Storm, I, I know Storm played really well, I, I didn't see much of SD Zome on the kill cam very much, but I doubt he, I'm pretty sure he did, uh, pop off there. And they're actually not on all mentions, so it's tied for both players in the match. I'm pretty sure SD Zome... Is he a... He's a DPS, pretty, right? he's, a, he's a DPS, I'm pretty okay, sure okay. he plays a lot of that. Yeah, he's a deep. Yeah, he's deep. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah. So I don't have anything else to add, I was just wondering. Because for some <laughs> reason I thought he was a support, so I don't know why that was in my head. Uh, but... Uh, well, I mean, you have people like Storm who yeah. play multiple roles, so it's very easy for someone like any one of the Geo players to play any role if they really wanted to. Right. So All I, right. I guess we can go on to the last game of the last uh, of last week, which was Plat Chat versus OTW, and Plat Chat, my boys, you know they pull off the win again, three two. Maverick, you're here, so it did look close at times. You know, it wasn't really an easy win. Absolutely. For you guys. Uh, so what went into prepping? What went into prepping for this game, and how did you guys end up pulling off the win against strong OTW? Well, they are very strong, and honestly, I just to make one call out that I don't feel got mentioned enough. Uh, Sneaky Snake, uh, he filled in for Vantage while he was away on main tank, and while he started off, at least in my opinion, being relatively weak on that Reinhardt, after each map that went on, he got progressively better. Um, and in the final map six, he was incredibly good. And I just gotta shout him out real quick. But other than that, we actually went into this whole week prepping to face up against Vantage because for us, one of our main like win factors, I feel, is winning that like main tank duel. We have No You, who is an honorable mention in this match. And he's been called out a lot uh, recently, and he's a good player for us. He our centerpiece, and we were prepping to play against Vantage, and then they pulled him out, so we, almost all of our work had been undone in a matter of like five seconds. But yeah. um, a, a lot of stuff went into this, and it was an incredible match in total, first map six of League Zero from what I understand, and um, it, it, I have a lot of respect for One Trick, like their management and their players, so I'm just... It was a great match. That's all I really have to say at this point. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I have to add on to the sneaky thing. I mean, he has been grinding. I will tell you, all three main tanks, because he did announce that he wants to move to main tank. All three main tanks have just been grinding hard. I mean, fighting not hard at each other, but just that fight that war just to push each other to that next level for OTW. I mean, as you can tell, I mean, sneaky got the when Vantage wasn't there. I mean, Sneaky pulled and got the the help there and got and changed the game. I mean, I really, but at the same time, I really have to give a lot of respect to, you know, No You and Eagle. Um, I think they're like, Eagle's just an amazing main tank. I think once y'all got him on Plat Chat, he just, he was like, okay, and then just changed into this form of just like this tank, this main tank that's just like, oh my god. Um, Eagle actually can go look back. Um, actually, preseason, I actually talked to him in particularly. Um, I actually gave him a bit of motivation and a prep talk just because he was so unsure about the season. But I am very glad that he got player of the match and mentioned it as well. Uh, something, so... I didn't watch the I didn't watch as much of the match as I would like, but uh, I will, will say that these two teams are definitely like two of the rising teams uh, in novice. At the beginning of the season, uh, everyone really had them lower uh, on the power rankings, uh, in my opinion, and they've definitely over these past few weeks have definitely like just been on continual rise uh, and always have been keeping it close and always have been winning. Oh, really much, and I feel that this match definitely demonstrates that these two are some of the best two teams uh, in the league. I like how Flat Chat is willing to stray away from the meta 
uh, and pull out uh, some, I won't say random, but there's obviously a set plan uh, with their heroes. I like how they costly pull out the Torbjorn. That's just, that's nice. Uh, and then also OTW has just been consistent uh, all season and they've just been improving their pieces as well. Uh, so I was just impressed by both of these teams, uh, and it's going to be really interesting going into these this latter half of the season and also the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. I mean, like what Maverick said before, the skill gap between these teams are becoming really, really close now. And like as you reach these playoffs, I feel like almost every team has a chance here of winning the championship. Of course, Rio still a long shot away, but like teams like Plachat, OTW, Geometric, they're going to put up a really good run. And uh, it's just going to be exciting to watch. Uh, but going on though, the player of the match was equally uh, Debop and on was No You. And you guys already talked about them. They played exceptionally. Igly, Debop, uh, and No You, they, they've improved a lot ever since joining Platchat. And they're, it's a big, they're, it's a, they're a big reason for Platchat's later success in the second half of the season. I mean, Igle, being honest here, Igle, Debop is probably one of our most... Sorry, that was my dog. Um... He, Igle is one of our emotional oh. cores. I'm sorry. Um, well, yeah, Igle's one of our emotional cores. In the last map, he really rallied the team to help them push through when we were down 1-0 uh, on the final map. It was 9-0, and he helped bring us back from that. So that's part of the reason why all of our team voted him for player of the match. He just is an incredible rallying force. And I, I agree there, because I, I think at the end of the day, yes, yes, being a pop-off player can be good, but just that one player on the team that really can just, especially like how the game was in a particular way, it was just back and forth, just to have that person just go, hey, we can push through, we got this. I mean, it showed to y'all when y'all got the win. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. But I think uh, we can wrap the weekly weekly recap part and go into the predictions. So the first uh, game of the week that's going to be taking place will be Rio Redemption vs OTW. And uh, all of us here have on One Trick Wonders winning, but Maverick has it a 3-2 win for One Trick Wonders, so in a much closer fashion. So I want to ask you, Maverick, why do you think this would be such a close game? Well, so there were a few factors contributing to the 3-2 for Wisdom versus Rio that make it seem like Rio is still not still near the bottom or at the bottom of our power rankings. But I feel honestly, um, after personal experiences with the Rio players and in scrims, and obviously scrim bucks are only worth so much, but uh, I feel like they're really on the up and up. I do value one trick a little bit higher than them, I feel. Uh, but with the departure of KTO this last week, it, um, it can open an opportunity for Rio to have a tighter core roster than one trick and possibly eke out the win, I feel. Uh, Rio has a very strong core at this point, and I think they can eke out a win if stuff goes right for them and wrong for one trick. Okay, uh, so you go, you go, you go. Okay, uh, so I was just gonna say so, uh, in case this wasn't well known, uh, Rio and Wisdom constantly scrim, uh, like almost every Monday. Uh, and they have always brought us to the brink in every single scrim. And I feel that they have amassed a large amount of scrim bucks with like a lot of teams. Like they perform extremely well, but for some reason, uh, Rio is never really able to bring it uh, in match time. But I feel like uh, if they continue, they will, they might surprise some people at some point. Uh, they might just go on a hot streak whenever they finally decide to take what they've been learning in scrims and turn it into actual gameplay. Uh, I know I've predicted them 3-1, uh, but to be fair, that is because I believe OTW uh, is one of, probably the, one of the second, like tied with a lot of the other teams for like the second best team uh, in Novice Division right now, or is one of the best teams in Novice Division right now, uh, and that's why I have them, uh, not convincingly, but pretty closely winning it uh, against Rio. Yeah, I can see that happening, you know. Rio Redemption is on the rise. You know, they bounce back hard. They've been getting map wins now, which is much better than them going 0-15 in the first half of the season. But uh, I, I believe Rio can win this game, right? But it's it's about, like, you can always perform in scrims, but at the end of the day, it's about how you perform in match in matches. That matters the most. 
But so if Rio Preps hard for OTW, if they play as good as they did against Wisdom Academy, if they use that surprise factor with a lot of these comps that they're running, I could definitely see uh Rio Redemption play on Swin. But I, I, I just think One Trick Wonders is on another level right now. I just think they're just in a new aura right now. I think they're just really good. Although they took a loss to Platchat, Platchat has also been on the rise. If OTW just bounces back hard, they should be able to take this. But I do want to ask you, Urban, you are in this game. How is OTW prepping for this game? I mean, yeah, like, I think it's been revealed without KTL being in there. I know there's been rumors on the street or in the chat that we're not going to be the same. I, I really don't, I want to say no. I mean, as you can tell, we did require Blazing. Um, he's been a great asset to the team. Martini, oh, yes, being a made one trick, he's, we've really been working with him. He is, um him with our helping staff too has been really helping Martini activate more of his in our cap nope uh, captain sorry light light lag captain um uh repeat is working on his just go to his comfort picks all right I'm excited to see OTW play but uh going on to the next week of the game we have geometric versus plot chat and uh it's kind of a split decision here so I have geometric taking this 3-2 while the rest of you guys actually have uh, Platchat either winning 3-0 or 3-1. So, the first person I'm going to ask, of course, is you, Maverick. What is Platchat's expectation going to this game, and how are you guys prepping? Well, so, one thing we've had to kind of get used to recently is uh, with the pickup of Silent Sword for Geometric, it gives them a lot of added depth to their main tank lineup. Uh, being able to swap between Silent and Corbs, and with us really having no you and Jaguar, um, we are working on focusing on mostly our tank line, making sure that we're ready for that, working around the new bands that are. And we're also looking at their DPS line, sport line, obviously. But we're looking at our individual matchups to see if there's anything we can do to boost our efficiency in game and get an extra boost from our players. Alright, uh, so I think I think Platchat definitely has improved a lot. I definitely can see them winning this, but I just have the edge with Geometric. But uh, Urban in uh, Florida, why do you think Platchat has edge in this game? So I, I just, feel... Oh, sorry. I, I'm going to... Do you want to go? Go, or do go first. You're okay, first. Okay. I'll let you go first. So it, I just believe that Platchat has... I believe that at the beginning of the season, a lot of teams, uh, um, the two, I'm going to name names, Hyperflex and Geometric, uh, they were predicted to be one of the top two teams uh, in the entire league, and they kind of rested on their laurels, I feel, and then I believe they've slowly started slipping. Um, and in my personal opinion, I don't think Geo... I, I feel Geo, they are, they've started to improve a couple, these past couple of weeks. However, I feel that Flatchat just has a stronger core, and I feel they have a stronger uh, synergy, and they also have that fight that they really want to win. Well, I feel like Geo is just resting, just thinking that they are still one of the best teams, and they won't necessarily fight as hard uh, for hard for it. Uh, and also, they'll have to if they do make that main tank switch when they haven't really practiced it. Uh, it might be a little disastrous, but I don't know if it honestly will because Geo does have. A pretty good coaching staff as well. However, I do feel that Flat Chat definitely has the edge out in this one. I think I have to add on with that um, as well. It's just the main thing is looking into it, even with my part theory of going to Flat Chat. It's just because the theory of, and it, I don't know if it's going to happen, but due to you know them not ironing out their problems and still staying on this weird twisty path that they're on. Um, it's just, and then giving to Plat Chat because due to, you know, they've been on the upward grind. You saw it against the LTW game when they, and then Plat Chat requiring, you know, no you as their main tank. It's just like they went from okay to this is the next form, this is my final form, and I feel like they're getting there. Alright, fair, fair enough. Definitely gonna be a game to watch this week for sure. Uh, but going to the last game of the week, we have Hyperflex versus Wisdom Academy, and all of us have Wisdom Academy winning. But I want to ask Florida, 
You know, you want to you want to keep your undefeated season. So, do you think you guys are going to be Hyperflex? Uh, I do believe we can beat Hyperflex. Uh, they have been making a lot more. They have been making interesting changes recently. Uh, not necessarily like team wise, but decision making wise. Uh, and however, just as I describe geometric and geometric and even Hyperflex resting on the laurels a little bit, we absolutely have not. Uh, we. We have a tendency, especially in scrims, to practice a lot of things that we're uncomfortable with, uh, and we're not residing uh, just on one set composition or one set plan. And I feel like our flexibility overall is gonna just—I feel not overwhelm, but it's just gonna help us just get the edge over Hyperflex. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but what about you, Maverick? And uh, oh, Urban's not in here anymore. I guess we have to go on without him. But Maverick, what is your opinion on this game? Who do you see winning? I mean, as I said earlier, I have a lot of faith in the Hyperflex management players. But in the end, Wisdom is undefeated right now. So it's hard to it's hard to go against them in a prediction. I do think it'll be very close. And I do think in total, Wisdom's the better team. But end of the day, I do think it'll be close, and I think Hyperflex has a lot of potential, like upset. Potential. Yeah, Hyperflex does. You know, Hyperflex—they're—they're they're a team that had like high uh, expectations. You know, they had a good coaching staff, they had a good management. They kind of didn't live up to those expectations, and kind of seeing that in mid tier. But we've seen mid tier teams push Wisdom to the edge. You know, Hyperflex could be another story of that. They could all potentially pull out the win. But uh, I think Wisdom has the slight edge here. I definitely do think so. And yeah. uh, I think we can just wrap it up there, unless Maverick and Florida have any ending statements overall before we wrap this whole thing up. Uh, I mean, first, do you have anything yeah, to say? You, 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 you go, you go, you go, man. Alrighty, I just wanted to say, um, so obviously one of the main things that Geometric is known for is kind of their, um, their very... I'm trying to think of the polite way to say it. They're very... They have a lot of banter to talk about. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how they get out of this next. Gotta add some spice to the countdown, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I hope you do. I hope you completely yeah. demolish them. Okay. Right. They need to be. Never mind, sorry. That's just. <laughs> that, that's personal. <laughs> that's, that's personal uh, beef coming into it. But, uh, either yeah. way, good luck to Geometric. Uh, I can't wait for the game. It's gonna be a good one. Yeah, uh, good luck to Hyperflex as well, and I'll, and, I'll, and yeah, it's going to be an interesting week. Hopefully, uh, we'll see who comes out uh, with the wins uh, this week. Yeah, but just want to say before we end this whole thing off that today is actually uh, Friday for the novice people. It's going to be the trade and uh, FA sign-up deadline. So I think we can... Uh, so this will give you guys a heads up. Rosters won't be changing much at all. Pillars might be dropped, but no trades will actually be active. So it's going to be important to see in these next two weeks leading up to the game because these rosters won't be changing. These are going to be the set and stone rosters come going into the playoffs. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how teams are... Because now the teams are set in stone, how much they're going to be practicing for the playoffs. Because all teams are in the playoffs this time around in novice. And no, I'm, pre everyone, I'm pretty sure everyone's hungry for that championship. Yep. But uh, I think we we'll wrap it up there, guys. So thank you guys all for watching this week 9 edition of the Countdown. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and go subscribe to the YouTube channel. But signing off for this week, peace nuts. Hey guys, welcome to the intermediate part of the Countdown. My name is Fruta Scooter. I'm joined here with Akimbo. Hi. Great. Hi. And Aqua. Hello. So let's get into the first game, which is... Double Cap versus DKE. Um, I was actually surprised that Double Cap won this game. I really thought DKE had it to win. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Wait, while watching it, or out? like before? Uh, before. You thought before? Damn. Well, that's where I disagree. <laughs> um, no, I, I, definitely, I definitely thought Double Cap was going to win initially, and I thought it was going to be way less close than it was. I don't really know what Double Cap was doing. I, I agree. I remember looking into this and like the, the game before this game, Double Cap had like a pretty clean roll. And then going into this, I'm like, oh, it's going to be like a 3 0 or something. I know DKE were pretty good, but everyone was hyping up Double Cap and they uh, kind of let me down. Yeah. Um, Aqua, <laughs> do you have any insight on that game? So, um, 
I don't really know. So coming into the game, right, we didn't, we weren't confident in any of the comps. Like we practiced double shield and then the Rhine Diva a lot, both, but weren't confident either because we were switching around like lineups all the time. Um, Joel didn't scrim with us, I think, other than one scrim a week. That's why he didn't like start that first map. And then um, we were even switching up like our, me and Toasty and our, um, even during the warm up scrim versus Pepega. So. Uh, talking about Jolt, uh, the player of the match was I Toasty Toast, and the honorable mention was Jolt. Which what well, uh, gamers? Yeah, even if he wasn't <laughs> yep. in the first map, he must have made a big uh, impact. Yes, that's the word. From what yeah. I saw, Toasty looked pretty dominant for most of the series that he was in. I believe he did split time for a few maps. I got the first three, and then he had the last two. Like Noel for most of it, so. Yeah, I mean, it's what, hard what to look bad going against Null. Yeah, that's Not what I'm saying. Null RAP. Uh, <laughs> and um, a lot of Toasty coming in, uh, like he really, um, from what I could tell, helped improve the mental. Since I kind of have this problem where um, I guess I try to focus on the mistakes and try to fix them. And he was just, hey, let's go get it. We're doing well. And then instead of just trying to fix mistakes, which kind of brought everyone up. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next game. It's Vitalize versus Pop Burgers. Uh, great. Do you have any insight on this game? Yeah. Copy Dog threw our first map. Okay. That's understandable. He, yeah. He DC'd. Yeah. Wait. No. So I, I have I have a few questions. Being a former Vitalize player, what is Tark doing on main tank? What is Dibs doing on off support? That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Okay. So uh, I don't remember. Story the short, Mark, Mark, I'm a, on the team. Tark's a main tank forced onto main support for the time or for that time a few weeks ago. And then uh Dibs uh yeah, I couldn't make the game and Dibs plays flex support. So we just put on <laughs> flex support for like the like the like I had to go like halfway through our warm up scrim, I didn't even know it, and so we we're like, oh fuck, well, Dibs plays like on and Zen and stuff, so like we'll just put him in and he did really well. Oh, I mean so it's you, weren't, just, you weren't just Tark. benched or anything? No, I wasn't there. Dang it. Okay. That's what they all say. Yeah, it's unlucky. <laughs> oh, that's how it starts. You haven't seen me in the past two games. I'm lucky. All right, and the player of the match down. for that game was Cat Catatrix, right? Yeah, he's nuts. He had a really and, good break. Uh, the honorable mention was Hero. Okay, yeah, the oh my god, I like, that's a hero, like, dude. So that's coming so in, match. I didn't think of Cat super highly, just because his Lucio. He played Lucio, right? I believe. Yeah. No, no, we Lucio... played break. I think Lucio was banned. No, no, no. The week before, like previous oh. games. Yeah, yeah, he probably. was fairly underwhelming, but his brig, oh it just he just found a way he just didn't feed like most of the main supports did. Yeah. <laughs> he uh he really carries on the comm side, which is really nice because you know, I fancy me some comms sometimes and I, I really like <laughs> making the support line with Cat. Uh Hero got the honorable mention, Hero's nuts, no explanation needed. He's now on powerhouse. Rip Hero. <laughs> Vitalize and then sending uh Stonks over to down. Powerhouse. Yeah. How else is the vitalized retirement hole? <laughs> hey, not quite, not quite. Alright. Uh, moving on to the next game, it is. Uh, Papega Parrots versus CDC. This uh, was just domination <laughs> in every sense of the word. CDC should, uh, go so, yeah. so bad. Not really sure what's happening in CDC. Like, going into week. Actually, um, week six, I thought they were. Game six, I thought they were like the top two, yeah, so um, possibly even better than Papega, but something happened. Yeah, I, I don't know. Everyone was talking about how good their roster is, of course, they're maybe you know like a decent main thing and everything. And, um, yeah, this should have been put on Live Week instead of YouTube. They just got <laughs> literally like decapitated. Yeah. Like I think I got DM'd like 40 minutes after it started with the, like Tanic saying that they uh, they already beat them. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who make like player lists and stuff and like ranking them and this was the first week that a Bot Burgers <laughs> main tank wasn't at the bottom and that's because it was a former's Bot Burger main tank. A former Bot Burgers main tank in the form of All, All Mike. Mike's not he got boomed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, beg to differ. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand by this. Um Sarmi's so inability to play Diva hurts um All Mike and Pixels more than anything. Yeah, I mean his flexibility only to Zarya and Sigma, like mediocre at least. He's a very strong yeah, it, it makes, heroes. It makes All Mike. Look All kind Mike. Of, uh, yeah. I mean, they could definitely definitely run double shield if they want to continue because I think All Mike's like an Arissa prod. I think that's he was really good on run too. Yeah. Eh. 
I, I think he's yeah. he's not he's kind of like um that Tyler type where he's not really on a hard carry games, but he's just on a do this. Yeah, thing. I feel like if he, he actually so gets a good team around player. him, he can look good. If he actually gets a good team around him, he can look good. But like, don't anger them. That the the teams are kind of lacking. That is the be best main thing, dude. Every <laughs> Shanghai player will tell you so. Hey, hey. they're already mad at me. Okay, don't make okay. it. Mm. Okay. Hey, snipes is good. There you go. Maybe they'll forgive me. <laughs> uh, all right. And the uh, player of the match for that game was Chicken, and the honorable mention was Sherlock. Oh my God, Sherlock! Sherlock's nuts. Uh, Sherlock I could talk Gachi. about him for like thirty Sherlock minutes. Gachi. Yeah. Probably uh, the best off support and intermediate right now. Oh no, I agree heavily. And also, congratulations, to Chicken, for going another match without uh, saying the N word. <laughs> <laughs> we we were the first hand witness of it. Wait, it was yeah, we're solid. Wait, what N word? What? We're not gonna demonstrate the uh, Ninny later this broadcast. Maybe Wait later, a yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> the slur tier list never came out, so maybe I can say it. It did come out. What do you mean? Shit, I'm behind. All right. So moving on to the next game, it is High Society versus Powerhouse, and this is the only game with a draw this week. Uh, the player of the match was Tofu, and yeah. Funny enough, uh, I'm surprised they're running Tofu. I feel I feel like Nemo is probably the better main tank, uh, probably even on Ryan too. Um, Tofu is still really good. Week, right? High Society has really been impressing me recently. Uh, yeah. Their B team is just as good as their A team, I'd say, playing against them. They're like old yeah. Shanghai when Shanghai had a B team before they dropped everyone. The issue is though, every time that you see High Society beating Powerhouse, you think, okay, High Society is looking really good right now, and then they and then, then they, they get fall. Upset. Yeah, so exactly. Is, is, are they just like the Kryptonite to Powerhouse or something? Oh, like no. that's all that I can really think of because the only other team that they beat was an old Overcharge that wasn't exactly good. So. High Society oh, no. has good pieces, like they have uh, Seb, so I High agree. Society highly. has good pieces, and if they could finish together, I feel like they could be... I'm trying yeah. to think. I, could, if I, can Nick, just, I can see them as a title contender, I'm not gonna lie. If yeah. Nick doesn't feed on Genji, they'll do fine. Yeah, oh my god, dude, his Genji is kinda rough. <laughs> in, his, in his credit against Shanghai, he was able to build the blade. He has a really good far, though, if I remember correctly. Nick? I don't know. Nick, he, I think. Remember, he did really well on Doom. Yeah. I didn't watch that game, though, because, like, eh, it's boring. Like, Kai's just... Sorry. No, I, like I think it. Zabs is really good, but... They're, like, they're like the opposite of, like, Zabs. So they're, like, the opposite of what Powerhouse did. Powerhouse was, like, really good early season, and now they're just kind of dropping hard and trying to rebuild. Whereas, well, like, High Society was, like, bad early season, and they, like, kind of rebuilt. I mean, um, I, I don't, I don't know if you can safely say High Society is good next. I think I'm going to need to watch a couple, like, basically the next few weeks of games to really see if know. they can... Truly content for the title. Yeah, but um, in my opinion, I feel like um, Powerhouse was okay in the pre, like okay in the beginning of the season, and then great in the middle of the season. Yeah. And then they really off heavily. And then they forced. Kevin they looked really, really bad the first two weeks, <laughs> like really bad. Yeah. yeah. Didn't they? Didn't they go to map five with the first? They went to map five like, against OC. Yeah, yeah, with original with OC. And then got rolled. He's good. I, I didn't we think don't OC was so. that bad. I mean, you see Fimi now on a like a new team doing like pretty decently, so I can't really say anything too bad. Hunter though, pieces. Hunter's <laughs> not a bad player. <laughs> I don't he's think they had a main tank though, so that's a problem. Hunter just had like a weird mentality back then, but I, I yeah. think he's working on like fixing it and stuff. Yeah, maybe we'll see him get picked up before the deadline happens. No, he already. Got I don't know up. if that's gonna happen. Was that not a meme? By wait, what? Yeah, it was. They said it wasn't. They said it wasn't a meme, but I'm yeah, pretty sure. Look at his roles. He it, has both. It had FA. to be a meme. It had to he be. He has FA and um. Wait, what? Yeah. Me yes. like suspended. Uh, um, I don't know. Right. That's not. A, that's not the point. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on to the next game. It's Shanghai versus Yoink. The, oh. The player, okay. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> the player of the match was Tyler, and the honorable mention was Snipes. Now yeah, you may well, speak. There you go. Let us okay. talk about White Knight his team. So, right. no, no, no. So, I'm pretty close with both these teams, right? And I kind of... So, Yoink, I was really surprised that they played that badly. I'm just gonna say, they look, they're kind of the scrim god team. I think map one was close. I'm trying to think if I'm thinking about the right game. I think their map one was close, and then they just fell off and got fucking rolled. Yeah. Like, I didn't... Um, 
Shanghai just plays a super clean game, and I don't think Yoink um, forced him off at all. You know, Luxy, Luxy can do only do so much, buddy. I'm trying. I'm rooting for him. Maybe Yoink will get. Luxy a turned off his brain. Yeah, that you, you look I don't at Yoink's roster. Talking. You look at Yoink's roster, and you see all the players. They have Luxy. You know, they have Acid, Zaktar, players with so much potential, and you think, yeah. okay, this team should be pretty good, right? No, <laughs> they they are they are not doing well right now. You should just swap them in Bob Burgers. Like, just switch their places. They have the I, same record. No, no, they are way better than Bob Burgers. I, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm just trying, I just want Yoink in playoffs. Yeah, due to their division, I think in Div 8, I think they'd be right now. Top 3. CDC or... Maybe, top maybe above right CDC, now. CDC, below yeah, like... I think it'd be like 3rd or 4th. Oh. Uh, they're definitely better than DKE and... Uh, Bob Burgers. Bob Burgers. Yeah. Uh, Alright, moving on to the next game. It's Overcharge versus Wait What? The player of the match was Akimbo. Everyone clap for him. Hey, who's that guy? Who is Yo. this guy? Yo, is this the Lucio player? No, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh. How how the hell did I get player of the match? Well, you did. So hey, stop complaining, get it. okay? Stop bragging about no, yourself. No, 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 no. Literally, Fucking like egotistical. Uh, get him out of here. No, I handed all honestly to Romy and Blaze. Yeah, I I think that they is. were truly the carries there because Blaze played like, Genji, right? Also, Blaze is insane. Blaze plays everything. I got scared because like, I think I, I've mentioned this before. Uh, map one, you guys got fucking rolled. They literally hey, pulled no them. language. Listen, we're making a whole like model off of this. Bad teams win control. You guys got freaking. Aren't rolled. you guys like? Uh, isn't overcharged what? one in like, eleven? One in control eight. Maps. Control. Uh, yeah, it just looked like um, okay. they like they were just trying to run like a bunker down comp. I think they ran a lot of risk sig. But yeah, they ran sure just like. But that's once we found out, hey, let's just hold W and yeah, counter we it. We won, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I personally can only do so much. Put, they should have put Crybaby in, but you know, that's just my hot take. I don't think he could have saved that. <laughs> it would have made it slightly closer, like maybe a map five. Wait, what has a stacked hit scan lineup? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think most Spork and Crybaby are similar, where they're pretty inconsistent, and then they have Peggy, who's like has lower peak, but just. Well, yeah, um, it's like, just doesn't really do nothing ever. When you go to like Spork and Crybaby, it's like they're really good, but like once you realize it's like, hey, just catch them out on the flank because they're just constantly gonna flank. You, you just shut them down and they can't do anything. Crybaby's gotten a lot better with that, but okay. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen it. He's, uh, yes, because he's been benched for his past few uh, games. Crybaby apologist. It's okay. Listen, I like listen, Crybaby. listen. Crybaby's he's good. good. I respect every former player of Vitalize. Except for Other than that one guy named. Except for Grape. Kimbo, go back to loose. Oh yeah, by the way, Grape, we're sorry for trading a third string main tank over to another team to be a third string main tank again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, moving on to the predictions now. It, this game... Very spicy. Whoa. Need to get a glass of milk. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> Yo, milk get is some spice. Good. Milk, is, milk is good. Whole milk? Or chocolate? chocolate? Nah, chocolate's oh, garbage. Oh. I don't even like chocolate. Yo, strawberry milk is the bomb. Mm. Strawberry milk yeah, is pretty not. good, but it's literally nothing but sugar. Yeah, yeah it's nothing but I sugar. Like it so much, bro. And it's like not even strawberry. If you, it, it, it's just into predictions, it, yeah. but it's like artificial okay, okay, strawberry. Okay, moving on to the predictions. Stop talking about milk. <laughs> uh, it, first game is double cap versus Bob Burgers. We all have double cap winning. Uh, congrats, Aqua. Congrats. Yes. Yeah. Why this do you guys think we're gonna take a map? Okay, I don't so at last time I rated double cap high and I wanted them to like 3 0 DKE. Uh, they kind of went to a map 5 with a. Okay, but you gotta realize this DKE is a whole tier above Bob Burgers. Yeah! But uh, double cap ought to lose look, them. Look, DKE had wins. Maybe like they take a map. I can at least take a map. Maybe yeah, control. Yeah, maybe. But like, maybe. except from that, I think it's gonna be a 3 0. But As, I'm just keeping it for the possibility. It's a team that's played against. Double cap in the past, like they, they have a way to lose one fights. I don't I don't know if they've cleaned that up recently, but uh, I I'm I mean just, I think we had a way to win, win lost ones. I think double cap's gonna win either way. I think it's either gonna be a a, a close one or it's gonna be a roll. There is no like in between like all oh, they win a map. I think it's either gonna be a map five or three zero. Only problem is that we lost our um like our person who only wins fights when we're down two. Also known as Jolto W. <sighs> Man, that guy's nuts. Well, he only. I mean, when you're down too. If you guys lose to Silver Arrow and uh, Note OW, don't know if I can support you guys anymore. 
okay, 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 okay. Oh yeah, uh, okay. another point. We are no longer running a flex support on main tank. Okay, that's, that's, that's a good, good thing. That's good. Oh yeah, Don Bongo's cracked actually. Ninny's good. Shut up. He's good, but he's he's still a flex support. <laughs> Don Bongo is better, honestly. What? He's kind of nutty. Don't use that excuse. Before he said he was like a main tank stuck on flex for it. Now you're saying he's a flex for the <laughs> Wait, really? Main tank. I don't know which one it is. Okay. okay. I've seen him play both. He's On like to the next segment. Pretty decent. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. On to the next segment. Okay. It's Pega Parrots versus DKE. We all think it's Pega Parrots 3 Yeah. Um, I, I, I haven't. The, I think they're the best team in the league right now. Um. Yeah, no. also, Shanghai. No, no, oh, Shanghai. Uh, yeah, yeah, Shanghai. Shanghai. I mean, that overcharge team is pretty good, too. I feel like you think Shanghai... Papega is better than Shanghai. I feel like if Shanghai, Shanghai is so wrong. I'll set a Tannic. That guy's a bot. Tannic, please don't. The Division throw. A apologist. Shut up. Alright, so I, I, my thing is uh, Shanghai, Papega, Parrots, Vitalize, because Vitalize is partnered with Goat only. That's right. Definitely, <laughs> Definitely not biased. Definitely not biased. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you're right. But you're saying overcharge is worse than vitalize? Okay. Yes, I do. Yeah, probably. Um, we gotta do a goat show match, dude. I challenged you guys to when you declined. Let the man talk. Let the man talk. Okay. Uh. Okay. So I think we don't really have anything to say about this game. They're just gonna get rolled. Uh, DK no uh, longer has a whiz or an off tank. That's all I'm gonna say. Thirty minutes yeah. maximum. 30 I've seen uh, a new gonna be, DK. It's gonna be flushed. Uh, a flock game. That was like 20 minutes. Yeah, I saw the new DKE well, editions and they're kind of... Nobody expected DKE to win, though. Some people thought flock could win. All I gotta say is DKE's oh, yeah. new DPS lines kind of might be worse than Bob Burgers, from what I've seen. Rento is, um... Mm. Rento's good. Sorry. I'll mm. say that. Uh, Rento's DSM, okay. I, I don't know if DSM's an actual D uh, DPS player, but when we scrim that, that's who they played and he's kind of garbage. See, we just straight up don't scrim well. DKE because we know it's not a, like... We needed to pick me up. It. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next game. It is Vitalize versus CDC. We all think Vitalize is gonna win three one. Congrats, great. Yeah, I haven't seen any of uh, I haven't heard anything about the new CDC and their like rebuild process. So we we'll scrimmed see the new CDC actually, and they're not terrible. But you guys are gonna beat them. I'd like to see how it goes. You yeah, know, I'm interested. So we do, we're gonna get fucking rolled. Up to we're gonna get freaking rolled. I mean, they have Wiz now, who's pretty good. I don't think Pichu is really an impactful trade. Sorry, Pichu. I mean, sorry, um, starter immediately. My bad. From what I've seen, Wiz um, is like a uh, tracer one trick. Yeah, he's a pretty he's good over on uh, pretty much every hero. From what I've seen, um, I don't actually know their full roster, but I I feel like if they um can find a way to put Sermi on not Diva, they'll do really well. They'll oh, do pretty yeah. decent. And at least take him out. Sermi might have a better Diva than. Pichu? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on to the next game, which is Powerhouse versus Shanghai. Shanghai's gonna win. Shanghai's the best team in the league. Yep. Uh, I think Powerhouse. That, I think that Powerhouse is gonna take a map. Okay. Actually, is so Kef's was the Powerhouse hit skin, right? Yeah. Okay, never. Yeah. So they have, now they have Hero Dad, or because I don't know who else they have on DPS. They don't really have a hit scan. They have Squirrel Ben, but I mean... Squirrel Ben's not. Active. He's with us now. He's on yeah. DC. Oh, that's right. Um, I, I don't think their DPS line will have as much synergy due to not having the dad Kef combo. I mean, I, I still think they'll, they'll probably be pretty good. I, I, I'd say I could put 3-0, but they, I mean, Powerhouse could win a map, but oh, Powerhouse will not uh, win this. I think they're going to take a map. And Shanghai there has is, an actual projectile there player There is now. a, granted, low, but their chance of winning it but it's so low that I just don't see it happening. Like, Shanghai like, has made so little changes. Yeah, I, mean, I think I was the. Do they need to when you're that dominant? No, they don't. That, like, they made they have a projectile player now. That's really the only difference from between now and three weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, getting rid of your B team though. I mean, that kind of their B team. They're kind of really nasty. Good. The D team. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that was like the same with High Society. They have a really fucking good B team. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I think Shanghai's probably gonna slap. slap. Nothing else to it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on to the next game. It's Hussai versus. Wait, what? We're actually um, drawn on this one. It's uh, some of us think that Hussai is going to win. Some of us think that. Wait, what is going to win? Okay. 
So there is, there's one thing I'm gonna say, and that is if High Society can get into the minds of Wait What and boom them mentally, they're gonna win this match. That's what I was thinking. I, I, if they build up momentum, all they gotta do is boom them for one map, and that I, I, I kind of literally do what we but, did. Do what we did, and they're gonna win. They just have. I just think Wait What has pretty poor mentals. As like I think a lot of the early analysts mentioned that they would be the team to break apart if anything after a bad upset. I did they, that. I was the, there. Pog. Yeah. Pog champ, I was yeah, there. I, mean, I definitely think. Uh, I think High Society build the momentum. I don't think Wait What's gonna come back in that. But if Wait What like does pretty good solidly and you know don't let them get in their minds, then they'll probably win. But I I yeah, think like I, High Society winning. Whenever whenever overcharged beat Wait What, you know. People on Wait What were saying like, yeah, there was no comms in really the last two maps or so, and that's because they got mentally boomed because we just started building up that momentum. Yeah, and, and do you guys have a hacker? I think I think they have a few players. I think uh, I think Soundwave might go quiet in situations like that. From what I've heard from other people, it goes quiet in like ten situations. Um, but other than that, I think Wait What's pretty good. I, I'd see them taking a map. But, I mean, it could be a uh, OC uh, Wait What situation again where they win. Wait, what wins the first map, and then like they go, okay, just hold W. And the way I see it is that um, so wait, what? They are no longer running Taco Truck on off tank, as far as I know. Who Ooh, Taco no. Truck's not bad. Ryu is so. From close. what I know, Ryu yeah, is, Ryu is um, really good. Really yeah. good. Ryu is insane. So now that Dude. Ryu's on the team, I I was originally going with a three one for High Society, but then I remembered. Wait. Yeah. Ryu. What? So it's a three two. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if Ryu can salvage it that much. I, I, I just, I, I just like I the idea. Ryu, of... I think Ryu can make them a lot better though, and it can definitely help them win the series. And I'm curious Honestly, what they're it, running. To me, it's also, they have a super about box, whether or not a DP feeds. A DP is yeah, good. If a DP plays Lucio, is not good. Oh okay, my god. If he can play Lucio, it'll probably be good. But DP cannot play anything outside of Lucio. He cannot club. play Brigitte to save his fucking. <laughs> okay, but that's so Brig. bad. No one could play Brig. I remember. Uh, yeah. She can't kid. Um... Tropical can. Just hold W. Tropical uh, can't play Lucy. Um, also, I think... We don't need them. DPS line, I mean... Wait, what's it's super flexible. pretty good, but I think if they run Spork, like, Spork gets boomed pretty easily. That That's definitely gonna right. bring a toll on them if they get started getting boomed. No, it's not even that Crybaby gets boomed, it's just that if... No, it's Spork. He, need, he needs energy. Uh, yeah, I know. Spork gets boomed easily. I know Crybaby that. But like, Crybaby, I feel like is Spork, but like he gets boomed in a different way. But yeah. like both of them, like if their if their mental goes down, then it's it's bad. But I do think but that's why they have Piggy. Piggy. <laughs> yeah, but I think they're both better than Piggy whenever they're not boomed. Piggy was good on his debut. Uh, I don't know. I feel that now. It's because they were, his debut was against Yoink. Everyone looks good when they win, people look bad when they lose. Ah, they, had a first, they had a good first map one against them, Yoink did. But then, of course, once again, uh, like the Shanghai game, they got fucking stomped. That after team's that one control. Yoink didn't play the comps they practiced, so that's like irrelevant. Okay, let's can we move on to the next and not talking about two weeks ago? Yeah, uh, Talk about okay. Shelby and Milk. Moving on to the final game that we have to cover, which is Yoink and Overcharge. We all think the Overcharge is going to win. Uh, Akimbo, can we get any insight of what you're preparing for, or is it too many weeks? Um, I will say, despite the fact that this is Yoink, we are still doing a lot of preparation for this match, and we are still, you know, working our asses off to get better, because, um, you know, we know that we have a tough road, really, to playoffs, so we are gonna go into every opponent with respect, and, um, not, you know, dick around just because it's Yoink, so, yeah. So, yeah. The way I see it, That's is that if Luxy can oh stay God. away from the shift key, That's um, you know, can do really well, and then yeah. and then Acid just kind of does Acid things. He kind of think <laughs> if Luxie can hold down the front line and uh, throw the team on his shoulders, maybe uh, maybe they can win it. I just put them taking one map, but uh, they, they could possibly win control. it if things go in their no, odds. No, yeah, no, no, no. they gotta keep O three three O. It can't change. But we're bad at control. That's the issue. We're working. Okay. On it. We're if working you on lose it. control, you're losing the whole thing. We we have plans. We have plans. That's all I'll say. Um, Alright, so that's the end of the intermediate part of the countdown. Do you guys have any farewell words? Mm -hmm. um, vitalized stonks are going down. Yeah. Vitalized. <laughs> <laughs> they got Jolto W. Vitalize is garbage, man. They're the worst team. Probably worse than Bob Burgers. Oh, yeah. Um, Yoink and uh, Bob Burgers should just switch sides. Shut up. After our match, though. After our match, like. Mm. Uh, I'd like to after. see like a showdown, uh, like like a, like a show match between like Yoink and then like 
I the final are the best. Between DC. Shanghai and Papega, or like OC and Papega. I'll I wait see, till like, Grand Finals to see that's true. Any truer? Unless, I don't, or we can wait till Grand Finals to see Bob Burgers versus Yoink. Yeah. Grand Finals. W. He's truing. He's truing. Uh, Kimbo Sigma is pretty cracked. Adios. Yeah, I mean. He, he threw map one, but uh, after that, he kind of cleaned it up. Hey, listen, we all threw map one. Listen, it, we're bad at control. Bad teams win control. Yeah, Copy did throw our map one also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Bob Burgers paid him like 15 bucks or something, Venmo. It's a vitalized thing. I thought that was CDC that paid him. We, we can't 3 0. It's impossible. <laughs> it's literally against the rules to 3 0 for us. Uh, Alright, so. Yeah, alright, see you guys next week. Yes. Bye, Mr. Countdown. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to the advanced segment for this week. We got uh, some special guests for you. First guest we have is uh, Flawless Main Tank for Guangzhou. Hello. We got uh, Baz, the main support for Flushed. Hey. And we got Term, the. Uh, I was going to say hit scan, but last week you played May, so you're a DPS for Goats Only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyways, uh, this past weekend we had some interesting games, some uh, some good ones, not some not so good ones. <laughs> oh yes, we'll, we'll get to <laughs> no, no 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 no. I heard. Actually, speaking of uh, term being on May, the first game <laughs> last week was Goats Only versus Hangzhou. I think this one was kind of a foregone conclusion with uh, Hangzhou just kind of falling apart for a week, and Goats Only yet. Uh, Robbing Hangzhou of some of their better players in in some trades. Term got uh, revenge on his former team, I guess you could say. Yes, sir. So uh, I did watch that match, but like, what was going on in terms of like your team? You, you guys just kind of dominated. Okay, well, so okay, so firstly, from my point of view, that entire week I didn't show up to a single scrim, bro. <laughs> I, I I was I slept through all of our <clears throat> scrims only because I was like, I think. The start of the week, I was like, yo, who are we playing? And he goes, oh yeah, we're playing Bark. And I was like, yeah, I don't really have to, I don't really have to, like, do anything right now. So, I, I didn't show up. But, like, during the match, like, we were, it was just, like, it was, like, more, like, Matt being, like, like, the serious father figure. Just, like, telling <laughs> us to, like, just shut up and all. And then Fugla just kind of, like, he just kind of did, did his thing. And just, like, killed everything. He was, and, like, uh, TH, our, our, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, our, our comms were just like, it was crazy because at one point, um, Bubbles was mocking Fugla because Fugla has a British accent. <laughs> Bubbles was mocking him in his accent, and then they started arguing. And it was just like the most, the two quiet, the mo two most quiet people on the team just started yelling at each other. It was, it was a fun match, and like I was running and. Again, personally, I, I did the 12 hour stream before that, so I was like drained. So I was emptying my brains out, but overall, it was an easy match that we didn't really have to prepare for uh, to yeah. sum it up, really. Google actually played Soldier for like the last two maps, I think, if I remember. Or he at least played yeah. Anvil Sky, I remember. I was like, there's no way he's getting value out of this, and he just like somehow got like 3k. So, okay. Uh, I've seen, just, I've seen Google fun. play a lot with Soldier and Ladder, it's kind of like a pocket pick. Like, yeah. True. <laughs> Signature. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna be real. Like, I see goats only as like a potential dark horse for playoffs. They definitely so. are. I think with a little bit of luck, they could <clears throat> legit be like a semifinal team. I agree. I'm sure Spellcone would love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. He's yes. been he's been putting a yeah, crap on it. Yeah, I I have actually been really impressed with Matt over over the past couple weeks. Like he's been performing he's really well. A, he's improved a ton. Yeah, he's yeah. he's looks pretty solid. I mean, granted, it, it was Hangzhou that they were facing, but like overall, <laughs> I, I think they they could actually be a dark horse if they keep performing like that. I remember the old days of uh, <coughs> Matt being like mid masters when we all got on six stack. We got all get in a six stack and try to get into the DM. It was so hard because he was so he was so hefty. And then Quite literally. Like, I just duoed with him once, and like we were winning all our games, like just me. It wasn't even like a six stack yeah. of like forty three hundred players. Like it literally was just me and him, and like we were winning every game. It was really cool. Also, like so much better. You can pretty much blame like pretty much all of like Goat's only <laughs> success on Matt, because like Matt, I think Matt was trialing, and he went to Goat's only, and then he brought Early Bird, and then he brought Bubbles, and then he brought me. Oof. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, I know because of the whole 
pandemic thing going on, like Matt and Early Bird don't have much of a Tespa schedule anymore, so yeah. all of a sudden they have Goat's only got two players. Yeah, so he just kind of like brought all the good players, and then eventually you got like Vermilion from like Bark with me. Yep. And then Foglo was already there, but he's just he's kind of goaded, so. Swift. Pretty much everything is pretty much on Matt, really, because he, like, I only joined because of Matt. <laughs> and, like, yeah, that's pretty much how that went. Imagine if he actually decided to go for manager. He would have had it, <laughs> but he withdrew. He would have lost it. He would have lost it. He cannot <laughs> deal imagining anymore. Uh, he seems to I think it's safe though. to say, I think it's safe to say at this point, Hangzhou Bark is the team that fell apart this season, though. Oof, true. Yeah. I think Juice is... Doing a good job of keeping it together, but I don't know how much. Yeah, of I, a I can see them being a, being a team like kind of like Newton from last season, where like they can pull it together and still have like a fun remainder of the season. But I don't see them. I don't see them no. doing anything in I playoffs agree. or even making. Playoffs, I agree. Honestly. Bark seems very, very, very bad right now. <laughs> Let me be honest. Yeah, you can still have fun with it though. Yeah. They yep. Good, good <clears throat> I think that's uh, from listening to Juice ramble a lot. Uh, he, he seems <laughs> to. He seems to <laughs> want to focus on fun more than performance, so yeah. it's kind of his ideal. But uh, yeah, Fugle actually got player of the match, Bubbles got honorable mention, uh, yeah, not much more to say. <laughs> the next match, uh, I actually recorded this match, it's uh, honestly this was probably the one match, if any, that I'd recommend going back and watching because it was extremely close the whole time. Two mid-table teams just duking it out and I think they were so evenly matched, I was Pleasantly surprised by gangsters, in all honesty. <clears throat> I uh, was not expecting much coming out of them, but I, I kind of overlooked a lot of the changes in the roster they had made, specifically Flawless. Like, uh, they, they had a lot of problems with main tank up until now. I, I had completely forgotten that Flawless was signed to them, so it's like, oh, they actually have a main tank for once. Yep, and I got my revenge against <laughs> Hanamura! So excited about that, and I don't know, it was crazy that entire week because of the fact that the day before I had hack issues yep. <laughs> where someone got into my, I somehow got into my computer and started typing stuff in Guangzhou chat and started like controlling my Overwatch mid Overwatch game. Craziness, wow. but thank god the managers, uh, shout out to Shund helping me there. <laughs> Fix my computer. We had, Craziness, dude. We had a bunch of staff with Flawless like the night before, and it was mostly just Shun helping, and the rest of us were a peanut gallery, but it was funny, to say the <laughs> least. He's like, it was hilarious. He tried like three separate times to factory reset his computer, and it's like, oh, error. And it had nothing to do with the hack, it was just like he needed to change some settings to factory reset, but it was really funny <laughs> for us. It was hilarious. I don't know, it, it seemed very fun to just beat Hanamura. I, I, they're really good friends with me, and we're really chill with each other, but it was just nice that my first win in League Zero was against my prior team, so felt really good. Yeah, I can imagine, and Hanuma is definitely no slouch, <clears throat> I wouldn't call them as bad as like they were towards the beginning of the season, so that's that's a pretty quality win under your belts. Yep. That's, if you were uh, to ask me before this game who would win, I would have said Hot Shots 3 Yeah. That's what I predicted so last week, so That's yeah. kind of a surprise for me. Yeah. Yeah, we found our footing. I mean, we knew that we couldn't meta, and we didn't really do good on meta. Uh, our DPS do not like to play me and McCree, so it's like we were we were basically slamming our head against the wall for a couple maps, and then we were like, you know what, can we just pick Gibraltar, play dive, and then we just continue to dive, and then dive, and then dive, and they did not know how to handle a yeah. Reaper soldier composition. So, I don't know. <laughs> they they kind of fell apart once you guys pulled out the Reaper. Uh, yep. I was actually really pleasantly surprised by uh, Dave B. Like, Dave B, yeah. He, he, I was not expecting him much out of him, just because I, I, I remember him being picked up. I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, but he, he popped off on the Widowmaker in he, particular. He is nutty, man. Like, I, I don't know. He's an underrated player, I think, in this league. People don't know oh, how fuck. good he actually is. Dave is an absolute creep. He's always he's no. always in like a weird spot and you don't expect him to be oh there and then he just says that. <laughs> no, he's pretty good, dude. I was, uh, I don't know. Listen, I, I was uh, I was in a scrim against the gangsters, right? I'm on the widow, so I have to outplay him. And like he's winning like a couple of the duels, so I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna like stop and play as passive as possible. I think it was like on the like, second point Dorado. I went into like the enemy backline or like the gangsters backline. I just stood there for 20 seconds, just like eyeing down the enemies. I was like, you know what? He's probably just not here. 
I take my first shot in like 25 seconds of just like sitting, and then he p just appears behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? Are, why? Whoa! How? Just the and I just, the only, th I, the only, and then I think, I, I think I just screamed out, like in comms, just like, dude, this guy's actual freak. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's kind of crazy, dude. I don't know. No, but and, like I, I don't like I, I want to say he's not good because I, I was like the hit scan like uh, counterpart, but like he's like good, but like he's just a freak. Like not in like yeah. the best way. He's just like an actual like like <laughs> hunting you down, <laughs> finding yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, he he has some really weird positioning. It's entertaining as hell to watch. I will say. Yeah. I yeah. Sure. Uh, surprisingly enough, he didn't get any honorable mention or anything. Geo got player of the match. Um, yeah. I was. Pretty happy to see that. I think um, towards the beginning of the season when Guangzhou was just kind of looking like not so hot, they kept swapping out their deep their uh, support lineup like every other map. It was like Geode and then Seoud and then Engage and just swap between those three. And it's like, what's happening? Yeah, we we sort of figured out, especially in this style, that me and Geode play good together as like a tank and support kind of duo in a way that we play like very aggro. And Geo is a Reddit Lucio at heart, so the man literally will go into your backline, kill your Ana, and boop everyone off the map, dude. He's he's just crazy, dude. I don't know. I mean, it worked. I, the one map that uh, Engage came in, Engage didn't look bad, but he was just kind of like there. He didn't. Yeah, he's pretty passive player. I think off. he's more like he's more of a peel oriented passive player, and he doesn't really make like he's not really a playmaker. But Geo is more of a playmaker, so I think that's why we play Geo with me more often. I thought, I thought Engage was more of a Baptiste player. I don't yeah, think uh, Engage Engage plays a lot of uh, like Brig, a lot of Bap. Yeah, kind of like that. It's so kind of like more of a new main support kind of style. Yeah, not necessarily like old Lucio. Yep. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on to the next match was Newt, Newt versus Easy Clap. Not much to say here. Easy Clap took it. <laughs> uh, but Nunu actually did put up a good fight, you know, they uh, they, they didn't just completely roll over, they took a map, I forget which map in particular, but uh, they didn't they didn't completely... Hollywood? Hollywood? No, it wasn't Hollywood. Hollywood, they didn't win that, no. Never mind, I'm, I'm tripping. I watched a, like, all the games back to back, aside from the Guangzhou Hanamura one yesterday, so they're all melding together in my head, but I know they took a map. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they, they did pretty good, but uh, overall, <laughs> Easy Clap took it. I'm, I, I'm expecting him to go uh, yeah. undefeated at this point. Avoid oh, got player of the match. Second week in a row, actually. I, I noticed when I was making the giant spreadsheet of player of the matches that Easy Clap was picking a different person every single week, so this is the first time they've repeated. <laughs> uh, Yusuf, honorable mention. No surprise there. Yep. Yeah. I honest. think newts, newts are definitely getting better. I think once they get Kaigo and once they build their roster fully, I think that Newts is actually going to be a sleeper pick as well coming into the playoffs. Yeah, I think for the most part they're locked up in the playoffs. Uh, I, yep. I don't know for certain, but there's a, a very good chance that they'll actually uh, be like mid-table for the playoffs. There, there's a small chance that Guangzhou can pass Newt Newts in the, in the bracket. It's very small, but we're going to try for it. Um, what I'm gonna say about Newt Newt is I think um, one of the two, so the finals is gonna be Easy Clap versus either Flush or Newt Newt. Yeah, probably. I don't see any other team making it there <laughs> other than Flush, Newt Newt, and Easy Clap. Yep. Who do Newt Newt have? Uh, Jazza, um, they got Kaigo, but he's still uh, suspended for a while. Um, who else? Their supports are Buffalo Myth. Uh, oh, yeah. Ben is yeah. also on the, also on the bench. And their tanks are Mega Gust. Yeah, Mega Gust. And so their their whole roster is kind of stacked. I'm mean, like honestly. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty. Jazz solid. is probably the most underrated hit skin in League Zero. True. Yeah. His widow's yeah. nutty. He's crazy. Even his, his widow. Really good. The guy's just cursed with like lack of attention. I <laughs> brought to him. True. But he's pretty solid. Yeah, I'm glad to see him actually starting a lot. Uh, you got, you like I I feel like he's sad. They seem like really mid tier. Yeah. Like, I feel like they're just like really hard. I don't think they're. Finalist, Mr. Pazzo. It depends. I on think they're the getting player. better. I, I think. think I think. Better, I, I think. think I, I wouldn't go that far. You know. Well, the I issue. No. Disagree. Well, the issue. Here's the issue. Here. See. See. Before they had to run Myth on May. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> and they didn't have him on the Lucio. They had Ben. So like they Myth they were Lucio kind of playing is... a little bit worse, right? So Myth now that Lucio they actually have. DPS, yeah. <laughs> and and now that they have like you know now that that they have Kaigo coming in right. And then they put Myth on the Lucio. I think it's going to be a lot, lot different. 
maybe to me it just seems like <laughs> on paper they're medium, but it could be better. Yeah. I mean, right now they've been pretty consistently mid table, but that's all they need to get in the playoffs. I feel, I feel like uh, like the supports are. It goes like supports are the best, and then like DPS are like medium, and then like their tanks are like the worst. In my opinion. Mega Gust like, and Yawker. I think Mega Gust is pretty. Crazy. I feel like I think Mega Yawker, Gust is pretty good. I feel like they're just dead <laughs> medium. Yeah, I think like, I think that yeah. Nunu's one of the teams that's just been like plagued by just the worst luck. True. Yeah. And they've kind of like, like losing to Hanamura hot shots. Yeah, having to forfeit <laughs> against Guangzhou to give them their only win to like what like week. Uh, week five. They yeah. beat Goats yeah. only three out. Yeah. Okay. But, like having to forfeit against a team that at that point in the season probably would have been <laughs> a, a tough game because they had Brody, but still winnable. Oh yeah, true. Sure. I don't think Brody like, is showing up at that. Or no, he did actually. Uh, show he, up. I, he was. I remember yeah. I was on duty at the time. I showed up to that game, <laughs> and uh, it oh, was, yeah, I yeah. was still suspended. And we just we load into the lobby. We're like <laughs> trying to scramble together to get a ringer. We're planning on running Jazza on off tank, and we're like, wait, they have their full starting roster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh crap. Oh no no no. Oh no. And it's like, is it we're trying to find a ringer, or are we just gonna forfeit this? So we just forfeited. <laughs> You guys honestly no might have been to able to win. <laughs> I'm not even uh, joking. It was GZG was a crumble at that point. Is it worth the trouble though? <laughs> True. <laughs> not wrong. But hey, you gave us you gave us a chance in playoffs now. So I mean, exactly. Yeah. In the end of the day, I'm not even on to it anymore. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, currently, let's see. Yeah, the only two teams that are not in playoff run right now, as taking the current brackets, would be Goats Only and Hangzhou. It is. But... Goats only has the possibility of knocking Hanamura out. Yeah, it's definitely up to that win. match at the end. It's going to be Hanamura versus Goats, and that's going to be the one that decides it all, I think. I hope I that think, one's streamed. I think, I think Goats only wins that. <laughs> I think Goats only wins it too, but we'll see. I don't know. I want to see which, <coughs> how the team is shaped up. Yes, sir. Anyways, uh, what was the next match? Last match was Flushed versus Flock. Flock, and this one was a little bit disappointing on my end. I like to see the close games. I was hoping this one would be a close game. It was not a close game. <laughs> it was the biggest blowout I think I've seen all season. Uh, shout out to Zira. He actually got player of the match. Like He was going in with a vengeance, I could tell. He got like a 4k on Ilios, and it was just like downhill from there. <laughs> like, I I'll think be honest, this... Acri. I gotta thank you for this one because you pissed everyone on our team <laughs> off to the point where, you know, usually against a team like Flock, I mean, we knew, we know, like, we went into this match knowing we were mechanically miles ahead of them. That's just kind of like what we just went in. We're like, yeah, this isn't gonna be hard. We're not gonna fall behind. Yeah. And, um, oh yeah, God. We were expecting like maybe we lose a map if we like troll a little too hard. But then we, you know, we just decided like against a normal team like that, you know, first map I'd walk out on Hog, I'd go on some crazy flank, just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, it's like you know what? We're just gonna play full meta this entire this entire game and just stomp them into the absolute ground. Just completely curb stomp them, knock their teeth out, make them want to quit the game, make their team defend. Because uh, yeah, I feel like I feel like you know that's kind of the thing about Flush. We're, Flush, we're like the ego checkers. <laughs> yeah, and the five and zero, oh, by the way, has got to us, dude. I was talking to a client before the match, and we, we, I was just hyping out. I was like. Uh, he, he was so mad. The client was so mad about it. <laughs> he was so mad about them voting 3-0 that they'd win. So at the end, oh, what's it called? Uh, client went in, pissed, and he and he won. So I mean, I'll give it to them. Flushed is I mean, looking really, really strong right now. I th for me, I think like <laughs> I think we we're on like our second map. In our in like our like match, and then I I, I think I just remember like Madeline, holy crap, flushed already beat them in like 25 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, sheesh. Yeah, it was it was 25 minutes of in-game time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yep. which, which beats which beats the record reset against Gongshou, by the way. Yeah. So. By like yeah. what? Like two minutes was it or something like that? Yeah, I think it was a two minute two minute better time. <laughs> Yeah, Two minute better time than Flock? I'll take it. <laughs> it was definitely a speed run. That you could probably just skip over that VOD if you're interested yeah. in really watching anything. <laughs> I watched the entire VOD, dude. That was that was crazy. Although I will say, like, I think the thing about Flush right now is there's a lot of players. I think a lot of people don't realize how good they are. Like, mm -hmm. I think Client Swift and Plato in particular. I, I feel like people just don't know Plato, but Client yeah. Swift, people I think don't know Swift. both were kind of just stuck on a team they like that was just way worse than them. 
all around. Sure. And like they, they kind of just got stuck there and Swift went AFK on all the teams he was on. So they came to flush. <laughs> and now like I think um like we have Andrew and Honeybee who are both like forty four at least forty four peak flex supports. Both like Honeybee's almost at forty five, Andrew's almost at forty six, and like Swift would probably get the starting spot over both of them, even if we had Andrew, even if we had Honeybee. Just because he's playing so well right now. And yeah, like, he's he's actually been playing like a nut. I remember yeah. him being AFK on Hanamura. I was like, damn, you know, he looks like he has potential and uh, you can actually get to see it. And then Plato, uh, he's one of my old friends from Boise. Uh, he's never really played on a team before. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> kinda, he just kind of locks Ash and Ladder while he does with E-Girls and makes weird noises and comms. <laughs> but now he's on a team and he, he, like, I, he like really likes it, so we're, we're popping off. And then yeah. client, client's underrated. Client's really good. Yeah, client's always been a, a bright spot in basically every team he's been on so far. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's Zero. He had Zero too. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Zero was just out for blood. <laughs> hey, we got to see the Zero Genji, dude. Yeah, he uh, he got I think like what, like nine ish kills and like three blades, something like that. On, yeah. on one map, so that was yeah. that was fun the to clutch, watch. The clutch one on uh, Ruins was really big too. You wouldn't want to yeah. map about it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I just want to point out one more thing. Um, I just, I think that people take Flock as a little bit more than they are. I agree. Because I think their their schedule up until last week, week eight when they played Easy Clap, was the easiest it possibly could have been. They played, yeah. they played Guangzhou, Bark. Um, Hot shots, goats only, and Newt Newt when it was at his absolute weakest. And when yep. Air was on May, which is a character he was far from comfortable on. And uh, they, they kind of just, they played every team when, when they were at their weakest. True. And a lot of those teams, even when they're, when they're at their strongest, aren't very But strong. Kanjay Reinhardt. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it's, I don't, I, I just, I don't think it's, their schedule really indicates much. And their record, I think, is a little bit hollow. I agree. Yeah, I could see that. It, it definitely felt to me watching it that like they were kind of at their limit of where their synergy from their core yeah. could actually bring them. And like at a certain point, especially in advanced, you kind of need the skill to back it up. And they kind of only have the synergy. It was like watching a, a GM team face a Masters team, essentially. Well, that's essentially what it was. Yeah. yeah. I think like EMP is 4.2, <laughs> but most yeah, of them are uh, I mean, basically, I think Flock is mostly low GM, high Masters players. And yeah. The lowest, the lowest beat player on uh, Flush that was starting is like four, high 43. I heard that they scrim so much. That's why they got most of their like wins. It's because they scrim so much that they get some synergy. They're not really mechanically a... skilled, but they're more synergy with base. There was well, a point have, in time uh... where Flush just started scrimming like... <laughs> Every, we were scrimming every single day, double blocks on some days, but it wasn't like because we felt like we had to. It was just because we were having fun scrimming. True. And we weren't actually like, it wasn't like a grind. It was just like, I want to scrim again. <laughs> we need to make <laughs> <laughs> So, kind of like that kind of thing, which is good. And I think, yeah. accurate what you said about us losing momentum. I think, I think that's coming from mostly like old, old Chengdu, right? Yeah. A lot I think that's that. reasonable, but the players that. I think cause that aren't starting on flush right now. Yeah, like Pandora. Is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, I think play? I think it's changed. The flushed environment's really good right now. Like it's really good mentality. We're all just trying to get better and have fun and working out. Yeah, well, I mean, if you keep playing like that, I could honestly see a flush versus easy clap finals. And knowing easy clap, they'll they'll make it so that they don't have to face you until the finals. <laughs> Uh, I would say they're going to pick us first if they want to teabag me, but <laughs> I guess we'll see. Yeah, I'll have to see. Depends on how they're, how they're feeling that day. Anyways, moving over to the predictions for this upcoming weekend. Some potential interesting matches, some matches I'm kind of expecting to be blowouts. Uh, first match of the week, Hanamura versus Flushed. Pretty much everyone's thinking Flushed is going to take this uh, term, and I think Hanamura can take a map, possibly. They have been known to take maps off of teams like Easy Clap. I believe they even took a map off of Flushed last time around. Maybe I'm thinking nah. of a different team. But, Three out. Uh, <coughs> I don't remember. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, Flushed pretty much has this up in the bag, especially if they keep playing like they have been. Yeah. Do you, do you have like any fears about Hanamar at all, or like taking them mildly seriously, or just kind of like? I eh. don't. 
I don't really have any fears because I think Client and Swift are out for vengeance. So I think this is just gonna be a wipe. Yeah, I think. Not gonna lie. I think um, if we can beat Flock in 25, we can beat Hot Shots in 15. I'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. I think. Um, yeah, 15. 15. That, that includes the time and spawn when like you're picking your hero. So. <laughs> Jesus, I don't. Man. I don't think they stand a chance. I I gave um, <clears throat> uh, hot shots a map because I I don't think they're that good, but I'm being told that they're decent, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt of a single map. All I yeah, say is the only player, anymore. the only players on <laughs> yeah. hot shots that we uh, like flushed in like at least from what I understand like actually like respects and like will take seriously is Jishu and Pascal. Oh, you. Uh, I've said it before, that's... Pascal. Why Jishua? Oh, get him Pascal yeah, can play any role. <laughs> Pascal, can play... Pascal can play any role on that team and be better Pascal's than the person good. who plays it right now. Pascal's good. In tank. Pascal's good. But what about? Can play literally anything else and be better than their you're... starter. Really? Because I think, I think you're so. underrating yeah. Glacial a little bit. I feel like Glacial's Pascal's pretty a... good. Pascal's just a really flexible player. He's actually really good. I think Glacial's, Glacial's pretty good. Glacial's good, but he's not him, too but... flexible from what I've seen. True. Like, he's really good on his picks, but if he has to go to like some weird DPS pick that. Because of the bands, or just because of what the enemy's playing, he's not too comfortable on it. And we haven't even brought up the bands. Uh, Hanamura hotshots on dive. Yeah. They... Or like, or like <laughs> Doomfist. I don't know. Yeah, and um, I'll say from the scrims we had against <clears throat> hotshots a long time ago, we basically just ran dive every map and like messed around and monkey noises. Yeah, monkey noises. That's all I have to say. If you haven't seen the video, <laughs> um, ask a DM Jepic. He'll send it to you. It should be in Community Showcase, I think. <laughs> Somewhere in there. I don't know. Anyways, moving on to the next game. Uh, pretty much everyone is expecting this to be a complete wipe as well. Newt Newt versus Bark. Uh, everyone's uh -oh. expecting Newt Newt to take a 3-0. Uh, sorry, Deuce, but uh, I mean, they're still rebuilding. Wait, 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 hold on. How is Newt Newt versus Bark more of a stomp than Flush versus... Uh, actually, uh, for Bark, I forgot. Because, like... Because Bark, Bark is literally just I mean, like... nothing at this point, <laughs> honestly. Like, uh... Yeah, no, I, like we, I, I had to think about it for a sec. No, like, we 3 out Bark, and we were literally down a man in me. Like, like I was just so out of it, bro. I was so tired. Like, I got my ult- I got my ult eaten, like, three times on May. I got it cancelled by the enemy May, by, like, her just, like, primary me. So, like, if we can beat them 5v6, I don't know. It's we, pretty light for me. We, <laughs> we scrimmed Bark two times in the week before Hanamura, and we basically rolled them. And then we they subbed in Beast, and every time they subbed in Beast, we purposefully threw so that they started Beast. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Why would terrible. You wait, <laughs> wait, he told me oh, about that. Oh my no. god, he told me about it too. Wait, that's actually kind of a five head move. That's terrible. Why are you gonna Juice, do him like Juice, that? Juice told me he's like. He was like actually kind of sad about it because he's oh, like, wow. oh, way no, better no, than me, so I just started him now. Uh, That's Juice was even that, talking it's about that it last worked. week on the countdown. Uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, I just got a DM that Beast is doing good, maybe I'll start him. Uh, oh. <laughs> you played oh with him, man. <laughs> It's oh, only no. funny because it worked, not because it of what you did. You know what? I respect. I respect the clever. Uh, the clever plays. Of course. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever heard of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Me too. it's a mental game, I don't know. That's, that's like five-dimensional chess, though. I, I, yeah. I, 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 that's, that's a whole different level. Anyways. This is why you don't scrim the team you're going to play. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Next game of the week, I think this is, has the potential to be the closest, is Guangzhou versus the Flock. Most people here are thinking the flock will probably take it, but it's gonna be close. I'm thinking three one. Baz is thinking three one. Term thinking three two. I could honestly see any scoreline. I yeah. was so close to yeah. saying three two. It it's I I think this is gonna be the meta that suits us the best because I play good when I don't have to be May abused and when we don't need to play May. Chaos and Davby literally are cracked at anything but May and McCree. If you put them on anything <laughs> other than that, they'll pop. And I think, in a way, Flock are kind of meta players. Yeah. So that I since yeah. their ban these bans kind of are gonna throw them off, I feel like we can definitely take it. So. I feel like uh, for <laughs> gangsters, like I I feel like if um Davby doesn't do anything, they kind of lose. Like. Yeah. 
straight up off the rip. Their team is bad without Davey. No offense, but they're, they're, I don't. I don't think they're like. I don't think they're hot without it. But so like, if Davey like, if Davey does Davey things, I think uh, I think they're good. And like, Flock is like. Oh, Flock is weird. They're one of the yeah. like. They're also like. I think they're mid, but other one says they're kind of good. But and then at the same time, we're also saying they're like. Oh, maybe like we all said they're kind of good, but now they're like kind of meh. So I. I this game is like it, it confuses me. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I think like, the, the it's, biggest, it's really either way. The biggest edge I see that Black might have is their DPS lineup because Nero and Peter are actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. Their tank lineup, like Fortal and Surf, aren't necessarily the best. They have a lot of synergy, but like Surf isn't particularly good at eating ultimates, for example. So like I don't know. And if they play Meek, actually Akahap is pretty good too. So their flex support position is pretty solid. But um, I don't know. Like I. I I fear that gangsters might just be better all around, especially given the bans. So yeah, sure. I, me, I get to go more of my comfort picks, and I honestly think that if if Dabby shows up and if Chaos plays as he's been playing, because he's been pr pretty cracked too, I think you guys are underrating him. He plays bad on like May, but he kind of pops off on other heroes. I think um, if we put them on those off rolls and they're like actually doing pretty good. Uh, I think we can definitely take them because I think our tank line and our support line can contest theirs, so it's possible. All right. I'm gonna be honest. <clears throat> um, when I when actually DM me to tell me is to tell him my picks and what I think, uh, I was thinking it, Guangzhou versus Flock. I was like, Guangzhou like can win this, but they don't have a good main tank. And I I didn't. I actually completely forgot that they up flawless. <laughs> <laughs> you just brought up the bands. I completely forgot about that too. And I'm, I'm gonna say it like, Flock is meta dependent and yeah. with, with bands on may Cree and brig and yeah, those, those, those are like the only important ones but yeah uh may and Cree being banned i honestly see a i honestly see guangzhou 3-1 i'm gonna change it yeah thanks <laughs> i mean i think we <laughs> I really see, can I see guangzhou winning 3-1 yeah maybe 3-0 if you get lucky maybe 3-2 if you get unlucky sure all right, and then the last game of the week, sorry term, but this one is probably yeah. set in stone. Easy clap versus goats only. Pretty much everyone's thinking easy clap is going to be uh, three three owing here. I, I'm, it's unfortunate, but everyone has to deal with easy clap at some point in the season. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because uh, our match is not being rescheduled, correct? I so there, aren't don't they going to be that down like? They're on, the players that they are down, like if they lose, like oh wait, was it, if it, if they lose their wannabe, their Yusuf, uh, uh, Kudel, and Cal, like I think yeah. that's actually winnable wait, to be honest. Oh yeah, oh, oh no, wait, yeah, no. No. no, yeah, yeah, I heard about this. So wait, yeah. basically, they formed a new team called What's Your What's Your Pika Cad. By the way, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of corny. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, like they're playing in a tournament that day, and uh, yeah, so they might have to down. like forfeit because all their players are missing. And uh, like, yeah. no, but they they won't be able to forfeit because they they have enough people on their roster. But uh, the people that are gone from like, if those people are gone and they have to put in subs, like it's actually kind of free. I think you guys win. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, it depends if they, it all if depends. they can if they can get their either players way. Either way, we all agree win. to just have fun no matter what happens, right? Yeah, so, I, I was talking to Matt. He was telling me like the he same doesn't want to try against Easy Clap. Yeah. He just wants to like have fun and like. See if you can troll them back and like. Yeah, and but like, I mean, like, if they're gonna be down the four, might as well just go hard because it's kind of yeah. free. That's what I think, but I don't know. We'll see if how they, it goes. Really. If they are down the people, I think you guys can definitely win that. Yeah. Yeah, it depends. I think. Uh, I think right now they're talking to try and get it rescheduled. I I don't know exactly what's going on with that because like, I think the they're having trouble finding a time that they can actually reschedule too, but. Uh, <laughs> don't reschedule. I don't know, because right now I don't think they're agreeing to any time, so if they can't agree, it's just going to default time, and I think Ghost Only is fine with that, so they might just get the win by default. <laughs> uh, I think, so... I think, yeah, most no, of us... That actually, that'd be so huge for playoffs, though, because that would... Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I would think make most of us agree to reschedule, though, because we don't want to be like... Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that is kind of I want the not, win. Because but... it's like, we just, like, just want to play. Like, I'd rather play. Yeah, I'd rather I play know. with, like... Who they want in rather than just forcing it just so we can get the cheesy win, you know? True. Yeah. Well, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like you're trying it, like, like Ghost Only yeah. Management is trying to screw over Easy I think, Clap. Yeah, I think whatever happens, I think it'll be a grand time. 
Yep. <laughs> Anyways, that's the last of the matches. That's pretty much all I've got. So, uh, Flawless, you got any closing statements? I'll just go down the line. Uh, nothing much other than I think we can beat Flock and Guangzhou's a sleeper pick. That's all I want to say. All right, Bez, you got closing statements? Uh... <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> uh, I gotta think of something. <laughs> I'll come back to you, Term. You got something? Uh, I mean, like, I'm playing. I, I got nothing. Wait, wait, I got nothing. <laughs> he, I'll say it. Oh shoot, I still got nothing. Oh shoot, okay. Thank Coming you. back. Here, I got you. I got you. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you for having me, Mr. Grenader. I was it was fun and uh, me and the rest of goats only um we'll try our best to have fun and win the league smile smile <laughs> all right Shout out to Sean. I would like to remind you all that the number of chicken nuggets in Matt's stomach exceeds that of his SR thank you have a good night <laughs> <laughs> and with that that's all we got so peace nut Ladies and gentlemen of League Zero, Akronator here, and welcome to the weekly segment where I decided to uh, do the much-requested analysis of the flock and what went wrong versus flushed, because in particular I think a lot of people were expecting that match to be uh, somewhat close, and ultimately it really wasn't. It was a complete blowout in the, uh, the truest sense of the word. And uh, we discussed a little bit of it and kind of got to the bottom of it, in all honesty, in the advanced segment. But even if you didn't watch that and you wanted to just watch this, you'll be seeing a bunch of uh, footage in the background of the game itself. It's extremely quick. Flock didn't even get a single point on the board. They got 2 0 on uh, control, and then they got full held for the most part. I think they got like one tick on Hollywood on their attack, uh, and then a little bit extra. And they might have done the same on um, whatever the other map was that I'm forgetting at the moment. I'm looking at the VOD right now, so I could just scroll through it. Uh, Volskaya. Yeah, they got, I believe, like one tick, if not. Uh, just barely missed one tick on Volskaya. So, Flock literally just shit the bed <laughs> in the truest sense. Uh, and, and it makes you wonder because up until that point, not counting Easy Clap, they were, you know, 5 and 1. So, that's, that's a pretty good record, especially considering they actually took, I believe, Easy Clap 2 and that 5. So, you're like, oh, well, they, you know, at first glance, it seems like they're still a pretty top tier team. It looks like they could have at least brought quite a bit of fight to Flushed. Obviously, Flushed put up a lot less of a fight against uh, Easy Clap, so the only metric we had to compare them by was their performance against Easy Clap and other teams. Uh, but for the most part, both Flushed and the Flock were uh, 3 0 ing or just dominating in some regard every other team that they faced together. So, <clears throat> looking at the VOD as a whole, it, it, there's a few things that went wrong and a few things that went right. First off, I think Baz pointed it out the best, is that the SR difference between Flushed and the Flock is just monumental. I mean, like, the Flock has some higher SR people, like Peter and Nero, I believe, are like 4.3, Akahap and Meek are around 4.3, 4.4, if I remember correctly. Akahap might be a little bit lower than that. Fortal's like 3.9, I don't know if he's ever peaked into GM, I wouldn't be shocked if he peaked to like, you know, 4.1 or so. He definitely plays with the confidence of it, <laughs> but for the most part, I believe he's uh, pretty 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 solidly at 3.9 surf i believe his peaks like 4.3 4.2 but i believe he did that in arisa meta playing arisa uh his diva definitely looks lower gm emp i believe is of the um i don't recall what what uh, team or whatnot they're a part of from tournament of king's row but i remember fortal surf and emp were from tournament of king's row and i believe they even won the first season of that season zero, their season zero uh, so they definitely have a lot of synergy, and they've probably been going for, like, what, almost a year at this point? If not sooner, I don't know if they've uh, had synergy from prior to Toker. Uh, but at the very least, like, they, the, th the three of them, their they're two tanks and their main support have a lot of synergy together. And that by itself is a pretty good asset, but at the same time, you kind of have to play to your strengths. And I believe that's one of the big downfalls of the flock in this matchup, aside from just the SR difference in general, because Flushed, I believe, is the second highest SR team in the league, aside from Easy Clap, which I mean, Easy Clap is just an anomaly in and of themselves, but we're, we're talking about Flock and Flushed for now, mostly Flo mostly the, uh, the flock. So aside from their DPS lineup, which in all honesty is pretty damn good, you know, Season Zero champions, Peter and Nero are well known, they're well respected, they're 
honestly nutty when they're given the chance to pop off. Peter in particular was uh, actually pulling off some crazy plays this game, but unfortunately alone McCree can't really do that much. You kind of need that synergy, and unfortunately unlike Crest last season, the flock doesn't seem to have enough synergy. They have a lot of synergy between, like I said, the, their toker core, but when it comes down to it, their playstyle is sloppy. And I think a lot of that has to do with Fordle's tempo in particular, obviously being the main tank. He controls the pace of how his team engages. And uh, I, it would not be the first time that I've called him uh, extremely aggressive, to say the least. He, he just kind of charges in headfirst on Ryan, and generally the team is there to back him up. And, I mean, to, to the Flock's fairness, they were there to back him up this time around. Unfortunately, Flushed is an incredibly skilled, individually skilled team on top of having a decent amount of synergy. I mean, these, a lot of these players have known each other for a while. Um, Ultra, Zira, Baz in particular. Uh, clients, I, I don't know how much he has played with them in the past. I know he's uh, taken a liking to Flushed since he's got on. I mean, he's been starting over Marky Candy. I don't, granted, I don't know if Marky Candy is uh, AFK or not. Plato. Uh, relative newcomer, I don't know. I think Baz said he knows him from college, so he might have a little bit of synergy there. Swift, I, I don't know if he has any synergy with Flush prior to actually playing with them. But at the very least, they, they all collapsed rather well, so whoever's leading their comms might be Baz, might be Ultra, I don't know. Um, I'm assuming it's Baz, just because I, I have personal experience with him being a really good shot caller. Uh, they, essentially what Flush did to just completely nullify anything the Flock could do, and makes a lot of sense after I watched the VOD, um, as to how they just decimated the flock, is that generally Fordo would charge in, you know, like normal, except Flushed did a much better job of collapsing in on the Reinhardt, so that even when Surf and EMP and Acap were all just piling in, making sure that Fordo survived, he would melt before they ever got a chance to get in there with him, because obviously he was up in the front lines and he was just a little bit too far ahead, and the flock just didn't have defense matrix, they didn't have uh, healing amp, they didn't have the uh, healing nade, you know, because by the time any of them got there, Swift already landed an anti-nade, and Fordle was just gone like that, and you can see that a lot in the footage in the background, I'm not going to be blurring it like I do some weekly segments so you can focus on what I'm saying, funny little editing trick there, but um, this I feel like it is important to actually see the gameplay footage, uh, on top of the fact that Plato was just really flexing, <laughs> he was just completely dominating in terms of DPS, like he was dictating the pace of the fight, Zero was just a constant pain in the butt for the flock, especially on uh, Ilios, the first map, like, my god, Zero had a boon to pick, and I believe Baz even uh, confirmed that when he recorded the advanced segment, because like he got that 4k on, I think the first round might have been the second round on Ruins, whichever one that was, I think it was the first round. Uh, like, Zira had a bone to pick, whereas I think the rest of Flushed were like amped, you know, they're like, oh, people think we're gonna be close, if not lose, like, let's prove them wrong. Uh, Zira had, like, was out for blood, and, and that definitely showed. I think we, as a community, inadvertently amped up Flushed, but I'm also glad that, you know, they, they managed to assert their dominance. Ironically enough, it's not really going to matter in terms of playoff standings because uh, these two teams are in different conferences, and right now Newt Newt is the only team that can really contest the flock for that first place spot in, I believe, Conference A, if not Conference B, whichever conference they're in. It's really only them and then Newt Newt and the other two teams are um, some of the, the lower teams in the rankings right now, so I don't know if they can even contest the flock. So despite this like heavily dominant win, uh, Flushed might still have to live with the flock getting a bye week in the playoffs but in terms of like how they just utterly failed how the flock utterly failed uh to do anything in this match uh, it it's honestly a lot of just them they have the teamwork they have some coordination not quite as much as you would kind of need to deal with a team like flushed you know if, if you're going to out coordinate a bombastically skilled team like flushed you need to have coordination out the wazoo, <laughs> like, the best way to describe it actually is just going back to uh, last season's advanced grand finals, when you had Chengdu, which was just like some of the most insanely high peak talented players we have ever seen in this league on one team, I mean when you think about it, you had Zero, Wannabe, uh, North, no I think McMap, or yeah, North and McMap both played actually, um, Marky Candy, Baz, and who is the flex support? Adam? I think it might have been Adam. Either way, you had like a lot of really high high peak players that um, 
can sometimes crumble when they go against a, an extremely coordinated team like Crest. Uh, but especially when they're in, when flushed, and these players are in their comfort zone. Especially now that you have a lot more uh, stable players in a way, like Swift, Ultra. Plato seems to be extremely stable. Client has just been consistently insane all season. To be honest, I, I think he's sort of a sleeper pick in terms of potential MVP candidates for off tank. Uh, obviously, Falcon is probably in the lead for that, just because he's been doing insane. But that Falcon is Falcon, you know. Uh, but I think uh, when you're looking at a lot of the 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 Chengdu version two memes, you kind of forget that Flushed does have quite a lot of stability now, uh, and a lot of players who can like rein in everyone else and make sure that they're actually doing their job. And whereas you look at the flock, and it's not exactly like Crest, because Crest had insane coordination, but they also had ridiculous talent. I mean, they did have Ultra, they had Falcon, they had Koodle, um, they had Buffalo, uh, Chance, who's actually on the flock, but he hasn't really been playing all season, so I don't know if he's just like not around, if they feel like EMP's better just because of the synergy. Might, honestly, it might be worth trying Chance, because uh, he is considerably higher peak as far as I know to EMP, and from what I've seen of their play, like aside from EMP having that synergy and just kind of knowing Fordle's playstyle, and that's very important when you're talking about, you know, this Ryan Diva brawl, the, the Lucio kind of needs to understand the Reinhardt's tempo. Uh, but other than that, like I feel like Chance is beyond a good enough player to figure that out, and I feel like he has a much higher peak than EMP. Uh, granted, you know I I'm gonna put my faith in the flock knowing what they're doing because, to be honest, they've they've only lost to the two teams that I could reasonably see them losing to, unless they lose to Nude Nude, uh, who have kind of been like a dark horse, although they've been been consistently pretty solid. So I don't know, maybe Nude Nude can also try and uh, take them out as well and get the revenge for the previous map 5 loss in uh, earlier in the season. Uh, but right now I feel like the flock really just needs to do like one of two things, if not both of them. The first one is work on coordination when you're going up against these like ridiculously high peak teams, because that seems to be where they start to crumble. Obviously Easy Clap, they put up a good performance, granted Easy Clap wasn't really trying for like the first two maps, I think it was a reverse sweep, if not like the two maps that the flock won. Easy Clap wasn't really trying, like they weren't running meta, they weren't doing... They are just kind of like memeing around and eventually they're like, okay fine, we'll put Koodle or it might have been Koodle or Wannabe on May like permanently and then Easy Clap just won from there on out. Like it was kind of close, I believe uh, Flocky managed to get a few points on the board uh, as opposed to this uh, flushed match, but for the most part like Easy Clap just dominated from then on. Uh, and and kind of the same thing with Flushed, whereas Flushed was just dead on trying the entire time. I believe Baz even said, like, originally they were thinking, you know, having fun, we're still winning, but, like, taking it a little bit easier. But once people started to expect Flock to actually put up a fight, they're like, okay, you know what, screw it, let's just stomp these kids and get it over with and completely speedrun them. And I don't know about league records, but it was certainly a personal record for Flushed, a uh, personal vendetta on top of that, to... to finish it out in like 25 minutes in terms of in-game time, the bot itself is like 56 minutes, which anything under than an hour is just like a dead stomp. You know, it's like there was no competition. And uh, unfortunately, you know, aside from working on that coordination against these ridiculously high peak teams, I think the flock themselves can also work to raise their peaks. Obviously, I'd say their DPS lineup that they've been running for a little while now, uh, Peter and Nero, honestly have ridiculously high peaks, and they they, even in this match, performed rather well. But especially in this meta, it's really hard to carry as DPS. Like, you can do a little bit, if, especially if you're playing like Widow or Hanzo. Although I believe, yeah, this was the week that like Widow and Sombra and all these hitscan heroes were banned for the most part. Um, I, I, believe, I believe at the very least, I think Widow was. I'm not, I don't recall. I could just go back and look at the match announcements, but I'm lazy <laughs> at the moment. Uh, actually, maybe not, because Peter is on McCree as far as I'm seeing. So... Yeah, for the most part, that, that's... Unfortunately, I was hoping to get a little bit more analysis out of this, be like, oh, well, Flock actually just made these really minor mistakes, but uh, maybe it's just because it was such a hard stomp that these, like, more nuanced mistakes didn't really rear their heads as much as, like, the, the, the extreme difference in skill level and performance level for this match. You know, maybe Flock just had an off day, but it didn't really look like it, like it from what I saw. It looked like they were just playing their standard game and Flush decimated them. Like, just had their number 24-7. And it shows in the scoreline. I mean, they, they couldn't even get a single point on the board in a single map, you know. Uh, so that's really all I've got. I hope you enjoyed this analysis, despite it being kind of surface level. But again, the, the, the main problems here were all surface level. Like, Flock would lose matches. They would lose fights where they had a huge ult advantage. And it was just because one person on Flush would just utterly 
dominate, you know, get like a 4K on uh, Dragon Blade going back to Zero's ultimate. Or just like one person would stall long enough or the rest of the team would trickle back in and all of a sudden it's a 6v6 again and Fl Flushed would just pull out the win. So I I'm sure Flushed will love to watch this. Maybe not, it's just pretty standard. It's everything that they already knew. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you can have something a little bit more in-depth one of these days. I did do an in-depth analysis at one point in the early in the season, I think. Anyways, that's all I've got for for this uh, week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Peace now. where they had a huge ult advantage and it was just because one person on flushed would just utterly dominate you know get like a 4k on uh, dragon blade going back to zero's ultimate or just like one person would stall long enough or the rest of the team would trickle back in and all of a sudden it's a 6v6 again and Fl flushed would just pull out the win so I i'm sure flushed will love to watch this maybe not it's just pretty standard it's everything that they already knew um but yeah i hope you enjoyed it uh hopefully you can have something a little bit more in depth one of these days. I did do an in-depth analysis at one point in the early in the season, I think. Anyways, that's all I've got for for this uh, week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Peace now.